All right, so very good evening and um, welcome to In Conversation With, um, a series that I started somewhere last year and the first person that I spoke with was uh, Madam Fatima Samura. And um, with uh, everything that has been going on with the coronavirus pandemic and um, how the players are coping, um, in consultation with my boss, of course, Michael OTJ, we thought um, it was important that we bring it back and check on some of the Ghanaian players, some of um, African players. And um, yesterday we had a conversation with um, Yao Yaboa, who is the Ghana under-23 captain. He plays his um, club football for Celta Vigo in Spain. And um, we had a very interesting discussion how the players are coping and how they are managing their lives in, in lockdown. But today is a big one. We are talking to um, the man, the, the fan favorite, if I should put it. <laughs> he's not been there for long, but he's a fan favorite. Odion um, Igalo from Nigeria. When I posted his name, someone said, he's a Nigerian, I should add that to it. <laughs> so Odion Igalo is joining me from um, his base in Manchester. Igalo, thank you so much for your time here. Yeah, thank you very much. Good to see you. Mm -hmm. I have good to see you too. I woke you up from your sleep. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. I've been I've been sleeping lately like a pregnant lady, you know. <laughs> yeah, I've been sleeping too much. You know? <laughs> Tell me about that. How uh, how is your shadow like when you wake up in the morning? Oh, uh, I wake up in the morning, uh, say my prayers, then I have to get ready for indoors workout. You know, doing like a bike, like sit up, like some short runs in in the compound where i live there in where i live here in manchester uh you know the we have a fitness coach in manchester they gave us program to do you know so all the players we have to do the program and sometimes we do like a workout together and uh the like a skype workout we'll be seeing right, each yeah. other doing right. work, yeah, workouts and all that you know so we we see all that then after that i have my breakfast after i have my breakfast then i'll sleep <laughs> i'll sleep sleep wake up watch movie eat lunch sleep again so i've been sleeping lately like i can say I don't, 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 don't put on weight though no because <laughs> i'm doing workout every morning even some sometimes in the evening i try to do workout try to do some sit up move something at home so just try to get myself it's not easy, you know, being indoors and uh, you don't, there's nothing really to do. You can't go outside or even run outside. So it's not easy, but we're trying to be fit and trying to heal healthy, you know, so that we'll stay in shape. And you, you, you've spoken to us about your the routine and everything, but how are you coping mentally? How is it like everybody is facing a stressful time? But talk to us about how it has been for you. It's not easy, I'm telling you. Mentally, you just have to be tough. You just have to be strong because we're athletes. We train every day. We go out every day. We're always around people. We're always training in groups. We always play a game in a stadium field of people and all that. And all of a sudden, three, four weeks plus now, you're just indoors. You're not mingled around people. You don't do what you love how to do best. It's just... Sometimes you want to tell on your head and you just say no. You don't want to think too much about it. I just put movie, I start watching movie before I know I'll sleep off. When I start getting tired and getting bored and try thinking about too much of football and all that, I just try to take my phone, talk to my loved ones, talk to my friends, smile a bit, watch what will make me happy and smiling, watch some comedy on my on, uh, on my iPad and all that, you know, to keep me happy, to keep me smiling so that I don't think too much. It's not easy, you know, because you're just indoors. You don't know when this is going to stop. You don't know when you can go back to football. But this is the life, you know. But like our goal is to be safe. That's why we are indoors. So we pray by God's grace this end very soon so that we can go back and do what we know how to do best, you know. And um, you, you talk about how you are know, coping with it mentally. Do you have a psychologist, maybe from the team that calls the players to talk to them in time for this? No, not really, you know, because uh, we are professionals but, uh, 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 in this game, but we just have to do what is good for us, being around our loved ones, take calm, 
watch what's going on, but don't put that too much pressure on ourselves, you know, to start thinking much about it. We just have to just be calm, take uh, 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 measures, wash our hands, and do whatever the medical doctor say. But the team gets to us every time, try to check on every player to know what they are doing, how they are faring, make sure they are keeping safe and all that, you know. But being indoors is, is, the, is the safest we can be. So that's what we're doing that, you know, so. But l looking at all that is happening, will football ever um, be the same when it returns? So what? Come again, sorry. As I'm looking at everything that is happening, will football ever be the same when it returns? Will football ever come back? What? Will, will football ever be the same when it returns? Uh, I pray, I pray it's going to be the same because it's going to take a while. It's going to be a little bit difficult because now the mentality will be changed a bit, you know, because people are not that okay to come to the stadium. People are not that okay to stay around people and all that because you say that I don't know who have this virus. I don't know. So many things are going to change, but. It's going to come back to normal, very normal in a short while because football has its own language, you know. People love football, especially in England, in Premier League. It's the best league in the world. People love the league. They would like to go out there and watch the Andalian team play, you know. But it's going to take a while for people to, to start acting normal around people, start sitting down comfortably, watching the game without thinking about what has happened and all that. It's going to take a little while, but he's going to come back to normal, which I believe. And um, we have lots of questions from you, from the fans in Ghana, the Manchester United fans. I'll be asking those questions um, when I could be around to Lots and lots of them. Um, but um, <laughs> talking about United, you were settling into um, United when this pandemic started. Take it back to those few weeks. How was the experience like? It's been a great experience. One of the best experiences of my life, of my professional career for 14, 15 years now. I think for me, I'm living the dream, the happiest moment of my life. Great moment playing for the club. I supported right from when I was young. I'm playing for the biggest club in the world. I don't know I'm going to explain this, you know, because if you're not there, you don't, you don't, you don't, you're not going to see the excitement, you know. You know, when you, you, can't get, you can't get, you know, when you can't get, you, 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 you can't get over it, you know, every time you're excited to wake up in the morning, go to training, see the lads, have that smile in your face, enjoying the training, even though how tough and hard the training is, you are enjoying it, you understand? Yeah, you are enjoying looking around and saying, Is it me that is playing for this biggest team in the world? Is it me that is playing for a team that I supported when I was back there in Nigeria in a ghetto watching this team on TV? It's the same thing. How do you say that? Ajegule, yes, Ajegule. <laughs> so there's no way you can explain that. There's no way you can, only if you can open my heart and see how happy and how everything is going before you will understand but like i tell you i'm living my dream and i'm happy every day that comes by it's a day for me to be happy and rejoicing going to the training i never had one doubt about it i'm happy i'm happy the first time that you wore the first time that you wore the united shirt You've talk, spoken to us about the experience because we have seen your videos and everything, even on WhatsApp channel with um, Pogba and Eric Bailly and everything. Those videos can be shared, <laughs> but it's interesting to see to, for you to express it in that way. But the first time you won the Manchester United Express, talk to us about the experience because every player and how they see the club. Well, uh, I could remember first time I joined the team, first training and all that, I get to the dressing room. I greeted the lads and all that. My training clothes to go out for that day. I took pictures of them, you understand? And saying, if this is it's real, you understand? Putting on my training kits, going outside to train with the lads is 
totally amazing. Then put it on the shirt, played my first game against Chelsea in Stamford Bridge. When I get to the dressing room, I saw my name in Gallo number 25 on a Manchester United shirt. Those those shirts for that game, I kept, I kept it. I'm going to frame it <laughs> when I get to Nigeria and put it in my house. This is the first shirt I used in playing for Manchester United and against Chelsea in Stamford Bridge. It was a great moment, you understand? I saw that shirt, I was like, you know, you know, when somebody is over joyful and have the tears of joy inside you that is this yeah. really happening or it's a dream, you understand? So it's, it's great, it's great. I don't know how to say this, but I'm happy and I'm living my dreams. With everything that you're saying, then I guess it was um, very easy to make that decision to join Manchester United. What the case? Of course, that was <laughs> the most easiest decision I would say I ever made in my life because I had some offers even when my agent told me about Man United, Manchester United and all that, you know. I was waiting, 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 time was going and all that, you know. When Manchester United said, okay, they want to do this day and all that, then I, I don't know how the other teams heard about it, you know. They started calling my agent, this, this, who can give him whatever he wants, who can give him whatever he's earning and all that. I just told my agent, I don't care whatever they can do. Just make Manchester United deal happen. This is what I want to go for. Is, is it true Manchester United really want me? If they want me, I'm going there. I don't care what they are offering. I don't care the pay cut. I just want to go there. Some other thing came and said, we're going to pay you what you're earning in China. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. No, just make the day happen. That's how I wanted to play for Manchester United because it's the team I supported right from when I was young. And having the opportunity to play it, money's not going to stop me. This yeah. is my dream. This is what I prayed for. This is what I was hoping for, even at my age then. You want money to stand in the way? No. I said, I want this day happen. I was praying and hoping and waiting. And God did it. It's God that did it. I it happened. I didn't play around. Even in the midst of coronavirus in China, even with the late hours and all that, everything get done. That's why sometimes when I talk God, when I do any time, people think I'm crazy. This is just God's work, you, know, you understand? Because I never thought that would happen with that short short time you know with the midst of coronavirus going on in china with the midst of everything going on there and all that with the short time transfer window is getting closed in uk and all that that deal happened so i thank god and i'm happy is it when you talk about favor over labor yeah when i said it i think around november in december people thought i was crazy you understand but some people did not really understand what I meant about that. I didn't say nobody should work hard, you understand? You have to work hard, but sometimes it's not how hard you work. If the grace of God is not upon you, it's difficult. If you don't have favors of God, it's difficult. Because I'm a Christian. I respect the Muslim. I respect everybody's uh, religions and all that, you understand? But I'm a Christian. That's why I believe more in God, you understand? And I believe every some things i have in life is the favor of god not because i worked so hard because many people work even 10 times other than me but they don't achieve that they don't get the opportunity to be in that place where i am but because of the favor of god upon me that's why that thing located me so when i say favor over labor some people are going crazy on twitter then after i joined my united people started sending message now i know what the reason of why he said favor over labor i said so you now you understand because God just want to show you guys something so that you will believe that there is something they call favor over labor. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but um, you're talking about the club, your, your uh, first weeks and everything. Let's talk about the players. Or uh, what excites you most about Manchester United? Everything, everything, everything. The way the club is structured, you know. Manchester United, you've seen it from outside. You don't know how that club is. You don't know how big the club is until you are inside. I'm a fan of that club when I, since when I was young. 
when you say Manchester United, just say, okay, because you're a fan and all that, you just got it. But when you are inside that club, you know how big the club is. The structure, the way people work there, the way they help you to settle down. Not only the players, you know, the players are amazing. You know, sometimes you go to a team, it will take you months to settle down. I said, after three days, I started living around these guys like we have been together for like five years, laughing together in dressing room. You know, when you want to come to the dressing room in the morning, you see Mata always happy, smiling. I was going to ask you about that. <laughs> same funny things. You see the, uh, David Dejia, you see Romero, you see Eric Bailey, uh, Bruno. Pop back come in the morning, always funny. You know, you just want to be around that setting, you know. Like we are laughing together, like I've been there for long, you know. That's how amazing it is, you know. The club out is they, they help you to settle down. They have everybody calling you to make sure you are okay in every aspect of your life. They are ready to help you settle down. That's how it is, you know. I said I never feel uncomfortable one day since I get there. You understand? They help you about everything. Silly young guys, players growing up, doing so well. So it's, the, for me, the best. The best and the biggest club in the world. And how, how is Mata like in the dressing room? Mata is a good guy. He's a very funny guy. He's nice, you know, because I speak Spanish, you know. So it makes it more even easier for me to communicate with some of the guys that speak Spanish, like uh, 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 Pereira speaks Spanish, Dejia, Romero, the other keeper. Uh, even Pogba speaks Spanish, Eric Bailey too speaks Spanish. So it's easier for us to communicate sometimes when we are together, when we're sitting down in one table, we just speak Spanish and all that. So it's more easier for us. And Mata is a nice guy, not only a good player, fantastic player, but he's a very good guy. The guys there in that dressing room, all of them are good. They are nice people. And um, we have a lot of, lot of questions for you. I'm going to go through some of them. Otherwise, I'm going to be in a lot of problems. So this one is coming from Michael Booth. Um, he's asking, any extension offer to stay at Manchester United beyond um, the end of this season? It's any what? Any extension offer to stay at Manchester United beyond the end of the season? We don't want to. Uh, I don't want to talk about offers or no offers and all that. You can. You know that I still have a loan deal till the end of the season, which has not expired. You understand? Now it's for us to finish the season very well. I do well, score more goals, if possible by God's grace. Then after the season, we will see what's on table. But for now, the season is still on. You understand? Even me as a person, you can't start talking about. A contract and all that when you the season that is going on, you don't even know when you're gonna resume and when you're gonna finish it, you understand. So there's no need to talk about that, you know. It's just for us to finish the season, then we'll see how how it goes. But I'm sure it will be the greatest pleasure for you to um stay on. Of of course, you know, like it's it, I'm enjoying my time there. So if something come up, why not? We'll see, study it. If it's what's good for me, and all the, and my agent said this is how it is. Of course, because I've been there, I've been around the club for a few months now. Everything's perfectly working well for me. Not for only me alone, but the team is doing so well, fantastic. So why not? We'll see how it goes. And um, this question is from. Kwame Osei Asante, he's asking, which of your teammates has helped you um, to settle at United? I think you've mentioned all of the players they've been going so far, but maybe which one in particular? Well, I don't have any, I would say all of them, all my, my teammates, everyone took me as their own and make me feel welcome. And it was very easy for me to settle down. Like I said, you know, when we're on round table 18, maybe before game or when in, in the hotel and all that, I always sit down with Mata, Eric Bailey, uh, uh, Dejia, Romero, and some of the other guys who speak Spanish and all that, you know, makes it yeah. more easier for me to communicate and to, to feel relaxed and all that. But all the lads there in that dressing room, they're amazing people. I will not tell you this is, this, this is, they're amazing guys, you know. 
they help you to settle down. They ask you questions. They want to know how you are doing. If you're feeling okay and all that. That's how, that's how good they are. I think you, you've spoken everything about like, the good side of Manchester United, but Empress, I see is asking, how difficult is it playing for Manchester United? How difficult? Yeah. You know, Manchester United is a big club. There we be always be pressure to do well because they want to win every game. They want to contest for every title. They want to do well. And especially this is want to end the, the, the season. First four to qualify for Champions League. Europa Cup is there, want to try and win it. The FA Cup is there. So there is that. You, you feel that little bit pressure that, oh, this game we have to win. This game you have to do well. You don't, I don't know how you're going to play it, but you have to do well. So sometimes it comes like that. Sometimes you relax that. Even with the pressure, you just want to enjoy the game as a professional. Go in there, enjoy your game, express yourself, and try to win the game. You understand? So there must always be for a big team like that that wants to win every game, wins every trophy. There is that little pressure. But it depends on how you take it or how you can absorb it and don't make it distract you. And I'm um, Quirko Lawrence is asking, what would be your description of um, Bruno Fernandez so far? Bruno Fernandez. 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 When Bruno finally settled down in England, you will see what that guy can do. He's a fantastic player. He has a vision. He, you know, like the player that wants the ball always, he's hungry to use the ball, he's hungry to play with the ball. He's hungry. He can give good passes, he can shoot, he can score free kick, he can score goals, can score penalty. Very intelligent. You know, it's a little bit step ahead before the ball comes. It's a step ahead to know what you want to do and what is a fantastic player. I don't want to say too much, but in times to come, you're going to see what he's going to do in Premier League. When he settles down, when he has that, you know, yes, I'm I fully 100% with my fitness here in Premier League. I know how the game is played here. I know how he does it. He's going to do great, even more better than what he's doing now. And um, this person is asking, tell us about um, William and his um, question for the game. Okay, I'll, I'll go to I'll go the next one. Okay, now um, Toby is asking that um, your favorite football player. My? Your favorite football player in the world. <laughs> I don't, I, I, I'm a professional <laughs> player. So. I, I don't I don't bring sentiment. Every player that is doing well I favor. I know they want to bring argument between Ronaldo and Messi and all that. So I'm not gonna die. But you enjoy watching both, don't you? You say what? You enjoy watching both. Yeah, I'm, I enjoy I'm 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 blessed to watch them play play against them. So I played against Messi when I was playing in Spain. I played against Ronaldo when they, when I was playing in Spain in La Liga. They are great players. I can't choose one and leave one away. I'm I'm grateful to God that when my kids grow up, I will tell them I play in the era of Cristiano Ronaldo and Messi. I even played against those great players. That's how it is. They are great players. I don't think. It's going to be difficult for anybody to achieve what those guys have seen so far in football. You don't want to take size yet? No, no, I don't want to take size. It's difficult. <laughs> <laughs> you are, you are very straight. No problem. But um, Winfred, Winfred is asking, how is Anthony Martial in the dressing room? Because of his demeanor on the pitch. They want to know how, how is Anthony Martial? He's a, he's a good and calm guy. Very calm. But he's a very good player. You understand? 
people only see the bits of him in games and all that. But in training, I train with this guy every day. What he does with football is crazy. He's so skillful. That guy has too much potential. Too much, too much. He's a very good player, but a very calm guy. You know, just walk in the dressing room, calm, do his thing, training, train well. So he's doing well, scoring goals now in, in the league and every game, you know, doing fantastic well. He's a very, very good player, man. has good techniques, good skills. And um, what, what is the relationship with um, Pogba? I think one, one of your fans wants to know your relationship with Pogba. That is from Telly58, yeah, on Twitter. He says, what's your relationship with Pogba like? Very good, you know, very good. When he comes in the morning, Pogba is a very funny guy. He shout, hey, I'll say, pee pee, pee pee. He say, yes, that's my guy, that's my guy, that's my guy, my guy, my guy. <laughs> you know. Well, he's a nice guy, he's a very cool guy. Dressing room, he's working out to get back to fitness. And imagine when we have Pogba and Bruno in the midfield, then, then you see different team, you know. Rashford coming back. Manchester United is going to be great again and start winning games week in, week out. I'm sure, I'm sure you can't wait to play with um, um, Rashford. Yeah, it's, good. it's a good place. He's working hard. He's working hard to get back to fitness. I've watched him play. He's a very good player. It's going to be a privilege to play with him because this young guy that is working hard and always score goals and always fighting, giving his best in every game. And um, Prince, Prince Phil is saying that um, he's asking who has been his favorite attacking partner throughout his whole football career. Who has been what? Your favorite attacking partner throughout your football career. I would say it's Troy Dini. Of what? I played with Troy when I played in Watford. We played together in the championship game promotion to the Premier League. In the championship, he scored 21 goals. I scored 20. Then in the Premier League, I scored 16. He scored 13. We are like, no telepathy because we don't, you know, something you don't even do in training, but when you're inside the field, you just know where he is, you know where I am and all that. That strike force, that partnership was what I, I've never had before. Until now, I've never seen it or had it. And um, this this is coming from a okay, Nigerian handle. <laughs> it says, um, most of these okay, you've answered you've answered these you've answered these questions, and this one is also on the permanent view, which I think you clearly answered. And one person is asking, um, why you're too close with um Mata? Which we've spoken about, Mata speaks Spanish. He also speaks Spanish as well, and he's he's kind of um good in the dressing room. With almost all the players. And um, there's this one that someone wants me to ask you that if you feel that, or if you feel racism in the Manchester United. If I feel what? If you feel that um all. Experience like any racist, I think I have to be sure of the question. Is that um, it's coming from Pakriti Shando? Mm. It says, Please find out from Igalo if he senses any aura of racism and environmental discrimination playing for Manchester United. I've never had it in my life before, and like I say, not even I've had about Manchester United doing that since I've been playing for the team for the past few months now. I said I would talk about everything positive because I've never had any negative moment there. Maybe because I'm happy to play there, but not because just that, you know, there's nothing like that. When you get to the stadium, you see how big that stadium is, sitting down on that bench, watching the fans screaming and shouting and singing. It's amazing. I have never had any form of that kind of stuff even before i joined the team 
and even now that I'm playing for the team. And um, Austin is saying, what has been your difficult match so far in the United jersey? Uh, difficult match so far. <laughs> I've played eight games anyway. Yeah. Three stats. Difficult match, difficult match, difficult match. Um, can't remember any difficult match. So what? Every match is easy for you because you're sorry, no? <laughs> no, not like it's easy, you know, because if you see the games since I joined the team, I've played. Yeah. We we won we only draw against we won Chelsea we won uh, 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 Watford we won the we only drew against a uh, uh, club bridge away that I said yeah. well, uh, that game was difficult but we came to Old Trafford and won that game yeah so I would say that game is one of the most difficult since I've joined the team you understand but the other games you see we won those games like not that difficult you know what made it what made it difficult yeah because uh going away from all the the the, the, the in your uh, in your fat cup it's always difficult and all that and i can remember everton game two was difficult against everton was one of the toughest game two we played we almost lost that game but one point for that game was was very good for us so even club Bruce game two were kind of difficult because they were all out to make sure they win the game so that they would take it to Old Trafford. But luckily we got it. We 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 play one one there and we finish it up in Old Trafford. And um, this one is saying when you were playing for Watford, you were always desperate to score against Manchester United. Why? Yeah, because uh, you know. That was the uh, Manchester United was a team I was supporting right from young and all that, you know. So you just want to impress, you just want to do something, and so that that team will have you in their head. Maybe they want to sign you or something like I just want to score so that I will have it in my record. That okay, even though I don't play because I never knew I'm going to play for Manchester United, you know. Then I was going crazy to just score against them so that we have it in my record. I scored against the club. I love and the club I was support, supporting right from young. So that emotion was there. That I was a bit intense in that game, trying to do everything. Even to the extent I don't even pass the ball. I, I was just playing some kind of selfish <laughs> game that day. You know, some they, I know there's some balls I, I need to pass to them to just tap in, you know, but I want to score, I want to shoot and all that, you know. That's how emotional I was in that game. <laughs> And your goal against um last this is coming from Coco Lawrence. Your goal against last, and I, I like it, is putting a small on your face. Would you choose it as your best goal so far in your career? Yeah, I, I would say for now is the best goal in my career because even me, after that goal, I didn't know how I scored that goal, you know. It's when I was inside the bus and my teammates started showing me video that wow 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 they're like wow 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 i want to go then i now sat down and watch that goal again that how did you do that i was asking myself how did you do that because i was just trying to find space in between the defender you know the ball just came i control it one time it came to the other leg i tried to control it and look for space space so one two three as the ball came to the left leg the third time i was touching the floor I just shoot it I just hear, bah, bah, just go in, man. That joy in my heart. I didn't know how it was watching it from outside till after the game, you know. Then I said, yeah, this, I don't think no, any goal can stand this in my career goal for now. And um, one, I think one question that has been going through, I have a few times through, what is the reaction of your mom when you told her that you were joining Manchester United? She was crying like tears of joy, you understand? She could not believe her eyes because when we were growing up, me and my siblings, she knows we support Man United. We can go to the viewing center to pay to watch ball. When we come back, everybody will be screaming, arguing at home. 
we'll be arguing with Arsenal fan or Chelsea fan at home. Sometimes we we'll come and, hey, you guys take it easy, because she support Manchester United too. So when the deal was going on, I could not tell her because I want everything to be 100% signed and sealed before I could break that news to her because, you know, telling people about stuff like that and God forbid bad thing, the thing did not happen. How are you going to feel? How are they going to feel? You understand? So I had to hold it. Immediately I signed and I told my mom I just signed for Manchester United. On the phone, I can see her reaction. I can see how happy she was. I can see her sharing tears of joy and praying for me that God would take me there to go and do well and all. I was happy. She was very, very happy. You know, she's one of my biggest fans and she's happy every day. People call it now. Congratulations. Your son is doing well, explaining well in Manchester and all. So it's a great moment for me and for my family, you know. And I'm um, is he talking about tears and everything. He's asking, um, do you ever cry? Um, over a football match, uh, I can't remember. It's been, I've played so many games in my life, so I can't remember me crying. In a I've been sad in some games, but not cry, 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 cry because I'm tough. I'm a tough guy, you know. I'm a tough guy, so I can't remember if I've cried in any game. <laughs> and this is coming from um, Halakasa in South Africa. He says, we would like to know his plan for football. How are you going to nurture the upcoming youngsters who want to emulate you? So they want to know your plan after football. Yeah, my plans after football, you know, you know we, we professional, some of us don't even know what we want to do after football, you know. But me, I would like to be involved in the setting of football. Like in Nigeria, I have a football academy. You know, the, I just got football academy last year, so the, the academy is growing bit by bit. I want to scout for young talent, try to give them the opportunity to play in Europe. I will advise them, tell them that their dreams is valid. Every man's dreams is valid. But it depends on how you work hard, how you believe in yourself. Because sometimes people will not believe in you. But if you don't believe in yourself, then you are, you are in a big problem. But if people around you don't believe in you and you believe in yourself and you don't give up, you keep fighting, working hard, training, giving your best, whether good or bad, the outcome of the game, you still forge forward to give back, then the sky will always be your limit to succeed. Learn how to work out, be humble, always ready to learn, be disciplined, dedication, train very well, don't live bad life, rest very well. I sleep, you know, I sleep because if I sleep very well, I'm refreshed to play, I'm refreshed to give everything I have inside me. So. There's a lot I'm going to tell these young guys, you know, because some of them get carried away with success too and all that, you know. So don't let success get into your head. Just remain humble in your own eyes. Believe that you have not arrived, you understand. Let people around you say, ah, he's a good player, he's a big player and all that. But in your eyes, in your head, just feel like you are still learning. You have not even arrived. The day you start thinking that kind of way, then you are ready to break or to make the crumbs running. But the day you feel big in your own eyes, then you feel you have arrived, then that's when your problem starts. Interesting. So all the people sending us um, comments, if you're a young footballer and you're listening, I think this one from Igalo is, is, is for you. You have to always make sure you remain humble. You keep your eyes on the front. You have to be focused. Igalo. Um, one question here is saying, have you managed to get by um, Aaron, um, Bissak? Aaron Bissak, yeah, in training yet? I think something happened in training. <laughs> have you managed to um, uh, get by him? That, that guy is one of the best right back. People will not see that guy now, but 
for me, before you get past that guy, he has uh, in his waist is like rubber. You understand the way he slide and yeah, I'm telling you, his waist is like rubber. The way he bend and steal the ball, the way he bend and tackle the ball away. Sometimes I would be afraid that ah, this guy is gonna get injured. You will see him one second is up again and he's going again, pursuing the ball and it's very difficult to get back. Uh, pass in the games you see it too he's very very good player you see in near future he's going to be playing for the england national team he's very very good player very very good player I and mean, his work rate is amazing and so so you still having had any pass um with him in training you still i think no 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 <laughs> i'm a striker so i want to say the middle so <laughs> People that is playing the wind, they'll go and get past it. <laughs> I think, I think, I think they said something happened in training that you have to redeem yourself when it comes to one, one um, So we have to talk about that. But someone is asking, um, how about Luke Shaw? They want to know how Luke Shaw is like at the club. It's a calm guy, funny guy, doesn't talk much, but. Seeing that guy outside is different, but that guy can run. You know, when somebody is fast, he sprints a lot in the game, you always see him want to go attack. It's the same thing in training. He works so hard. He's a very good player. He works so hard. He's calm in the dressing room. He's a good guy. And interestingly, some of the comments come in, Kobe Wilson. <laughs> I we are waking up from bed, but you have to give me the test. You saying it. your best, you have to give us your best five or five teams. So uh, maybe you can stick best. with my United players, or you can of course. cut your nets wide to give us your best five or five teams. I will stick. I will stick with uh, Manchester United player. <laughs> uh, in the back, I'll put. The captain Maguire and uh, Bissaka. In the middle, I'll put Bruno. At the top, I'll put me and Masha. <laughs> <laughs> and, and who are you? Play, play two, one, two. <laughs> you don't have a goalkeeper? Yeah, I'll, of course, uh, David will put David there. Yeah. So then, then you're having, you're having six. Huh? So you are okay. So you are not adding the keepers to it anyway. So um, probably will. No, so I you thought have, you said five. Yeah. Five aside, okay, with one keeper yeah. or without keeper. With without keeper. So yeah. I think I think that question has has been answered. Someone is asking you. Um, Barry is asking your favorite moment with a team. Yeah, I would say. The, the the derby game we won. If you see the atmosphere in Theatre of Dreams, it was crazy. It was booming before the game. You can hear the crowd. You can let hear how loud the build up to the game. Derby game is always tough, but the Manchester derby is something else. When you are inside that stadium, I sat down on the bench and I was watching the crowd. Everywhere was filled up. You hear the noise from the start to the finish, and the way we play that game, the way we won, everything just worked perfectly. I was very proud of the team, proud of the fans, and I was very proud of myself for being in that game. Even though the little mint I played contribute my own quarter to the to the team to win that game, and that was my first derby in England, so I was very happy. After that, when you go to the dressing room, I think we can assume the atmosphere, but you are there to talk to us about the atmosphere. When you go to the dressing room, were they talking or it was just all the relation? No, it was it was great. Everybody was happy, shouting in the dressing room and talking about the game, about the goals happen and all that, you know. You know, it's a different moment in the dressing room, you know, when you are happy, the atmosphere, when you're winning or when you win a game like that, the atmosphere in the dressing room is always lively. People happy, 
people want to talk about you want to relax don't rush and go home and all that you know so it's different when you lose the game and all that but winning always brings good atmosphere and um this is from <laughs> the said i should ask you between well this, this is tricky but um i'll stop it your thoughts on it it's that between iniesta and lampard who is the greatest uh, why are they putting me in this kind of funny position? <laughs> Lampard is a Lampard is a goal scorer, you know. It's not only yeah. a midfielder; it's a goal scorer. Iniesta, uh, it's a great player with the touches, with the ball. Though he doesn't score much goals. But the assist is difficult. I can't pick plates. This is very difficult. <laughs> one. I would I would rather have the two of them in my team. You know, they are they are good players. Always always playing it safe. But there's still lots of questions on the um, on Messi or Ronaldo. I think you've answered that. You said both are great players. But it looks like dude, they want they want you to make up your mind on one. They don't want you to pick two. They want you to make up your mind on one. So I think we've got just about um, 10, 14 minutes to go. So you have to make up your mind on one. And Look, you know, anything I, anything I said now, tomorrow you're going to hear it in the <laughs> in the newspaper. Because I did one interview two days ago with uh, one guy in Nigeria and the son in England, Daily Mail. Everybody just picked it, you understand, you know. Because that guy asked me, are you signing permanent? I said, I don't know, because my loan deal has not expired. I've not gotten a contract. He said, ah, Igalo said Manchester has not offered him a contract. You understand? That was the headline. They didn't even say what I said. <laughs> you know? Anyway, so, so Messi or Ronaldo? I would take Ronaldo. Why are you taking Ronaldo? Because he's a hard worker, you understand? May I believe in hard work. Messi is blessed. Messi is a genius. He's out of this world. He's incredible. But for Ronaldo to be putting on work every year to try to catch Messi, to try to win him, to try to do everything, is incredible. You see Ronaldo at his age, you see how hard working is still. That's kind of the mentality I have. I like to work hard to achieve whatever I want to achieve. That's what I was saying. I was advising the young guys today. No matter what you have attained in life, never feel you have arrived. Still keep on working hard. If Ronaldo at his age still be working hard, then who are, who are we? To not be pushed to work hard, you understand? So that's why I pick Ronaldo. <laughs> okay, he's so a, now he's a great player. He scores a lot of goals too. So, and um, this this one is asking who, who is um is it um Galante is saying who is the best African player um he has played aside his um the Nigerian brothers. So who is the best African player that he's played um aside the Nigerian player for so the crazy player? Okay, who is the African player I've played with? Yeah, the best African player that you've played, maybe you played with outside um, your Super Eagles players. Uh, I've played with Kojo Samoa in Udinese. Very good player. I played with the Tornado, Stefan. Yeah. I played with him in Cesena in Italy. You know, when you watch those players play before, then you start playing again uh, with them. It's a great privilege. I, I played with a lot of African brothers, but I think now I'm playing with Eric Bailey. Great players, you know, great, great players. Great what, players. What you and, is that? No, yeah, go ahead. They are great, great players I've played played with, you know. And in my in the national team, 
I don't think I've played with so much player in the same club, like in national team. Only I think it's only Isaac Success I've played with in Watford. Apart from that, I've not really played with any Nigeria in the club side. Okay, but when when you look at on the African terrain, what are some of the traits or what are some of the things that you keep from these players? You talking about you playing with um Peter Samoa, Stephen Afina, who um is is on top like these people love him here in Ghana and even beyond Ghana as well. What are some of the things that when you play with these African players, what do you learn from them? I didn't hear that line was breaking. You said what? I'm asking, when you play with these African players, like your brothers mm. and everything, what are some of the things that you learn from them? Yeah, you you see, Asamoa is a very humble guy, very calm and quiet, and he works hard. Even when, when, when I was in Udinese, he's one of the guys that does the dirty job in the field when, when playing game. He runs 90 minutes, very intelligent, and it's very calm. It doesn't get carried away with praise and hype. Even Steven Apia, even all what he has achieved there, and I played with him in Chesena in Italy. He was humble, he was jovial. He was, you know, you know, some players, when you meet them, they feel that uh, they are too bigger for to communicate with you or to, to sit down and interact with you. That was not the case of Steven Apia. He was very, very humble. We are talking, we even laugh every time in training and all that, you know? So all those things is a privilege for young players that is coming up, you know, meeting somebody like that who encourage you, who laugh with you, who does not feel that he's bigger than you or he has achieved more than you. So it's good. And I'm moving away from that. People want to also find out are you coming back to the Super Eagles anytime soon? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. For now, I'm done with the Super Eagles. But in life, you can never say never. You understand me? I'm, I'm constant. I'm in contact with the coach constantly. We talk. Even like three days or four days ago, he sent me a message and all that. You know, we still talk. I still message him to wish the team good luck if they want to play a game. But you know, we have young players, very good players in the team the likes of Osime coming up, scoring goals, Chukweze. We have good players, good, exciting players, you know. I just want them to keep doing the job because they are doing so well. So for Super Eagles for now, I would say, no, I just want to concentrate on the club football for now. That's it. But some of the fans believe um, we have all these, uh, we have all these young players and everything, but they believe your addition, although they've had a... Um, a not so good relationship with you in the past in tournaments and everything, but you still come up good for the Super Eagles. They believe your addition to the squad is really important for them. Why are you dragging your feet not wanting to join the Super Eagles again? Yeah, like I said, the young guys are coming up, they're doing very well. I just want the country or the fans to believe in them, give them that mantle to take up that responsibility to do well. I know the coach said the same thing. He want me to be back because I can nurture the, the young ones. I can teach them one or two things and all that, you know, which, like I said, you never can say never, you know, when you understand. But for now, they are doing well. So I just want the team to keep doing well like that. I'm watching them from afar, supporting them. Then we'll see what the future holds. But for now, I just want to be afar as a fan, watching them, supporting them, then concentrate on my club football. So, which means there's still some love for the Super Eagles? Of course, it's my it's my team. Super Eagles is my team. Uh, it's my it's my country, and I've played there. I know how the setting is there. The coach gave me opportunity, even when ever the award was against me, and I would like to even come back, which I did to play for him. And we've been talking. We have a good relationship. Even with the guys there, I have good relationship with them. I never had any problem with anybody there. We never had any problem. So it will be a great opportunity to come back if the opportunity arises when the time comes. But like I said, for now, I want to concentrate on my club football. Then we'll see what happens in the future. Talking about club football, um, Wasti Center Side wants to know 
Um, Igalo, between John Percy and um, Van Nistelrooy playing for Manchester United, who do you pick? <laughs> I will, I, will, I, will, I will gladly play pick Van Nistelrooy. Why? But Van Nistelrooy is a goal scorer. He does not show skills, does not try to dribble and all that. He's a, he's, he's a position striker. Me and a striker who can run between defenders and have space. That's the kind of striker I learned from. Don't get me wrong, Van Persie is a good player. He scored with both feet, he do, does everything. But Van Istero is a striker. When he's fit, when he's okay, he guarantee you goals in every game. You know, he runs between defender. He can score goals. He take his chances and all that. So I would choose Van Istero as a proper nine center forward. Um, Kwesi Swave is asking, how good is Bruno Fernandes? I think Kwesi Egalo has answered this. He said, um, we are yet to see, or my United fans are yet to see the best in Bruno Fernandes. Um, you, you people haven't seen anything yet, but he played with you before. So, um, wake up for the um, Bruno Fernandes show when the season resumes. But this, this one is coming from Dawood Afri. We have just about four minutes to go. He says, um, which of these greats would you play with? Um, Paul Scholes, Gerald? Zavi or um, Lampard? <laughs> I'll play with all of them. <laughs> no, I got it. You have, you have to pick one. You said which of these greats will you play with? I will play with Pascal. And you know, you definitely have to tell us why you're playing with Pascal and not Gerald, Zavi or Lampard. Yeah, because... Man United X is he score goals, he can give good passes and he's a great player. He was a great player, so I'll play with him. And um this is coming from um is it the boss? An interesting, yeah, an interesting name from Twitter. <laughs> He's saying Igalo, are you going to change um your dressing number in future? Are you going to change your 25? No, no, no. I don't think so. It's the 25 has been giving me luck so far, so why would I want to change it? Is there anything we have to know about uh, just number 25? Why you pick just number 25? Yeah, because when I joined the team, you know, that is the jersey that was available, and I think that no, 25 and 19, so I picked 25 because when I was in Premier League, I wore 24 from when I was in Watford, you know. So 24 plus one is 25. So I just picked 20. And you know, legend like Antonio Valencia wore that shirt. So it's privilege. Nigerian Kanu wore 25 when he was in Arsenal. So it's a great number. I just pick it and said, okay, yeah, lucky number for me. Talking about Kanu, and even the first player also wore um play for Manchester United, the first Nigerian actually, to play for Manchester United. Did you have any conversation with Kanu after you signed? And what, what were some of the conversation lines? No, he, he sent me congratulation messages, you know, when I signed for Man United and he just advised me to keep working hard and I, I'm going to surprise so many people that didn't give me the, the benefit of doubt of coming to that team, that he see me doing well there. But I, I should work hard and believe in myself. Don't let talks of people distract me. So it's 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 a good one. And I'm finally we're wrapping up. We just got your final words to the fans that joined um Ashton Igalo. Yes, sir. I said just your final words to the fans that join in to watch us here um, before uh, we go. Okay, I just want to thank you guys for being live it's been amazing one hour with you guys i'm happy i shared some of my experience and all this with you uh thank you guys for supporting me and i'll keep doing well and making you guys proud please guys be safe stay indoors wash your hands regularly 
and don't go out. We we're gonna we're gonna fight this together and we're gonna come back and doing what we know how to do best and making you guys proud. God bless you guys. Hey Gallo, thank you so much for joining me here on um, the conversation. Anytime we call you, you do this with us. Thank you very much. And um I'll leave you to go and sleep now, but thank you, thank you so much. I appreciate this. No problem, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you, and God bless you. We are wishing you all the best. Okay.